Hey team, we're going to talk about how we can export and use our SAS or SCSS variables inside of our JavaScript with Next.js. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and that little notification bell for future updates. SAS or SCSS is an extension of CSS that allows you to take your CSS to another level. It has a lot of features built right in, including variables and nesting, and a lot of things that just helps make your life easier as you're building out complex CSS systems. And while using these variables inside of your SAS or SCSS is super, super handy, sometimes you need those variables inside of JavaScript. And instead of trying to maintain them both in SAS and JavaScript, how can we maintain them in one spot? Now, typically this can be challenging to do, but because we have tools like Webpack, which a lot of frameworks are built on top of, we can actually have the ability to set up rules based on the loaders where we can actually export our variables right in those files. Now, particularly, we're going to see how we can do this with Next.js, which is a React framework, which does use Webpack under the hood. By default, Next.js supports SAS by just simply installing the SAS package. So to see how this works, we're going to create a new application using create next tab, where we can just simply run this line and get started right away. So inside of my terminal, I'm gonna run yarn create next app, and I'm gonna call this my SAS app. And that's going to go through, grab down the default Next.js template, and it's also going to install all the dependencies and get us ready for a new project. And once that's done, we can CD into our new directory, where then we can run yarn dev, which what's gonna happen is Next.js is going to spin up a local server, and in the background, it's going to compile those files for our new project, where inside of our browser, we can see that once it loads, we're going to have a new Next.js application. So as we saw in the documentation, the first thing that we need to do to actually get SAS to work is install SAS. So in my terminal, I'm gonna run yarn add SAS, where it's going to grab that package from NPM. Inside of my code editor, we're actually starting off with a very basic project. And by default, it comes with two files that are used for CSS, where we have our globals, which includes things that aren't scoped by a class name, as well as home.module.css, which are styles just for our homepage. So to start, we're going to rename both of these files to have an extension of SCSS so that we can actually change them into SAS recognized files. So that means we also need to update the location of where these files are imported. And to do that, we can go to the pages directory where first inside of underscore app.js, we can update our globals import to SCSS. And then also inside of index.js where we're going to update our home.module.css to .scss. So now if we hit yarn dev to spin back up our server, we shouldn't actually see anything change at this point, but that means that it's working. So we're at a great starting point. So to start actually testing out our SCSS, how about we create a new variable where if we look inside of home.module.scss, we use the shade of blue multiple, multiple times throughout the file. We use it for both our title link as well as what happens when you hover over one of the cards. We can see that's exactly the case with the Next.js link as well as the cards when you hover over them, it has a blue shade as well as an outline. So inside of my styles directory, I'm going to create a new file and inside I'm gonna call that colors.module.scss. Now, as we'll later see, we need to use that module pattern inside of that file name in order to eventually export these. So keep that in mind when you're naming this file, that it needs to be whatever you want to call it .module.scss. But now inside, I'm going to create a new variable and let's call this color link since we're going to store that link color inside, where I'm going to grab that same shade of blue and I'm going to paste that in as the value. Now back inside of home.module.scss, we can use that color variable by first importing our colors.module file where then anytime we're using that color, we can select all those values and we can change it to our color link variable. Now, again, if we refresh the page, we should notice that everything still looks the same, but we can prove that this is working by changing this color variable and let's call it blue violet as that's my favorite CSS color. And now we can see the next JS is blue violet along with all the borders and the shades of the actual cards. So next, we're only using this color currently inside of SCSS. What if we wanna use it dynamically inside of our JavaScript? To do that, at the bottom of our color.module.scss file, I'm going to define an export, where inside of that export, I'm going to first set the property, and let's call that variable color link, where I'm showing that as camel case, and let's set that equal to our scss color link value. So now I want to use this variable inside of my JavaScript. So I'm going to copy this variable name and I'm going to open up my homepage at index.js. And at the top, I'm going to first import that variable and I'm going to import it from my styles colors.module.scss, similar to where we're actually importing the home styles on that page. 
Now to test this out, inside of the description on that page, I'm going to replace that with link color is, then I'm gonna dynamically set that as my color link. And to take that a step further, I'm going to wrap that with a span so that I can add a style attribute so that I can say that the color is that same color. And when the page reloads, we can now see that new description with the dynamic color being set, both with the name and the actual value or the color of the word. Again, we can prove that this is working dynamically by updating that value to how about dark orange, where if we now look inside the browser, we can see that everything changed to that orange. But I like my blue violet, so I'm going to change it back to that. But now this is a great way where we're actually able to show that we're grabbing that value. But how can we use this in a practical example, such as what if we want to use that color value as a React prop? To test this out, I'm going to use React Icons, which is an awesome React component library full of a wide variety of SVG icons that we can easily add to our app. And one of the cool things is we can pass in a prop of color, which allows us to easily change the color of that icon. So to start, I'm going to run yarn add React Icons to actually add it to my project. And in my case, I'm going to use Ion Icons 5. So I'm going to want to import my icon just like it shows here, where I'm going to import the destructured icon name from React Icon slash IO5. So let's just first paste that in. That way we have that set up to easily change it. But I want to add a rocket and a planet. So how about I'm going to first look for the word rocket and we can see we have a few examples. I'm going to use IO Rocket. So I'm going to replace this icon name with the actual name of the icon. And then how about we find a planet as well? So I'm going to search for a planet. And we can see we again have a few variations and I'm going to simply use IO Planet and I can add that to the import. To use them, I'm going to go ahead and just clone this description where I'm going to change this to be IO Rocket and then also add a second icon of IO Planet. And just so we can see this a little easier, I'm just going to add some quick styles on it and set the font size equal to 5EM. I'm going to also remove the margin since I know that that's going to be a little too much. And once the page reloads, we can see we have our icons. Now, as I said before, we want to test changing the color of these icons. So to start, let's create a new variable. And I'm going to call this color icon, where let's set this to dark turquoise. We can spell it right. Then just like before, I'm going to define color icon and set that equal to color icon for my SAS variable. Now I'm gonna grab that variable, that property name, and I'm going to also add it to my import statement for my colors.module.scss. But then for each of my icons, I can go ahead and add that prop of color and set that to the color icon. And now when we look back inside the application, we can see that those both changed to that dark turquoise color. And again, to prove that this is actually working, how about instead of dark turquoise, we change this to just violet. And just like before with the link, we can see that it was dynamically updated to our new color. Now using these colors for both our links and our icons are pretty simple use cases, but this has a lot of potential value for how we can share our color systems both between our SAS and our actual JavaScript. Such as if we were using Chakra UI and we wanted to customize our brand colors and make sure they're consistent both between our SAS and our JavaScript. Or if we're working with complex data and we wanna make sure that our chart data is actually lined up with our the rest of the UI. SAS is a super powerful way to manage your CSS and being able to combine that with your JavaScript gives a whole nother level of how we can maintain our style systems throughout our entire application. What's your favorite SAS use case, feature, or way to actually share your variables like this? Let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about SAS, you can check out my video called SAS and XJS where I go through more features of SAS. You can find the link at the top. Or if you want to learn how to create pages and how that entire process works inside of Next.js with the last avatar API, make sure you check out this tutorial using the link above. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click the little bell for future updates. Thanks for watching.